All right, we're back. Tee off with Jan Stevenson. And believe it or not, we have Jan Stevenson. <laughs> it's about time you're back on your own channel. How's it going, Jan? Uh, it's going good. I'm just so busy right now. I'm playing a lot of golf. <laughs> yes, that's awesome. Glad to hear yeah. it. And... I played in uh, the Aramco Pro-Am last week, which is um, the D it's the, the European LPGA sponsored by um, the Saudis. So it's basically their live program they have five events around the cut around the world and uh so i played in the pro-am and then they had uh, international women's day on thursday so i spoke at that so it's been busy yes it certainly sounds like it how are you feeling physically I feel great yeah ready to go i'm ready to play some golf that's great so Me too. yeah <laughs> <laughs> i played i played nine holes uh friday we got like a 60 degree 60 degree day here I got out there for nine holes. I wow. was very happy. Yeah, it's beautiful weather now. It's in the 80s. It's perfect golf weather, and it's it's dry. There's not much humidity. It's beautiful. Can't wait for all of us to go out and play golf. I'll 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 I'll, I'll use the camera. I'll 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 be the uh, the cameraman while you guys play golf. There you go. Yeah. Uh, all right. So players' time. Uh, this is a big time of the season. Uh, we have another signature event. Uh, Lucas Glover's not happy about it, but uh, everybody else, I think, uh, is pretty content with all the money that's being dished out there. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we talked about this. Uh, you know, I, it is kind of weird that they call this a signature event because it's just so popular anyway. There's all, there's just so, I mean, how much more money can do you want to give them? And I guess that's why they have to call it a signature event. But, I mean... It's standard cut. You have, what, 140 in the field. So it seems like everything's the same about this event, except they're calling it a signature event. And I guess the prize money, obviously, is a little bit more money. But we all know how big this event is. But we don't need them to call it a signature event. Um, but it is what it is. It's the new, uh, it's, it's the new way that PGA Tour wants to uh, compete with the Live Tour. So so be it. But back-to-back -back signature events uh, is, uh, is, is, is real good for us fans. Um, and then next week, Jan, you're going to be on location at Valspar. So I uh, can't wait to see you there. Uh, we've been talking about that all season. I know. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's going to be great. I, I love coming to the Valspar. I can get some good feel, up close uh, video of the, of the players and talk to the coaches and talk to the caddies and get some inside information. Yeah. And obviously we'll have that available here on the channel. Uh, and then before you know it, the Masters will be here uh, in about a month. So it's coming fast. Uh, this is it, though. This is the last big event. We've got the two back-to-back. -back. We have some, you know, Valspar is a nice event, no question about it. Um, and then you have, what, the two Texas events and then Masters. So that's the Yeah, I'm actually surprised there's so many uh, big names playing Valspar. Really oh. surprised this year because typically it's a weak field. Okay. Um, you know, they've played they've – played a Florida swing and they're getting tired and they're trying to rest for the, uh, for the masters. But, um, there's a, a lot of big names have committed this year for the Valspar. I guess if you live in Florida, it makes sense. You know, a lot of them took off the last couple of events on the West coast. And so they're trying to get ready and, and, uh, and stay home, I guess. So, I mean, that's what I would do, but who do you, who do you know? A that's lot of them take off that spot. But Valspar, is, it's, um, it's a hard golf course, so I guess it'll help them for the Masters. Do you have uh, – an, do you already know who is playing? Well, I know that, um, you, you, you know, typically uh, Justin Thomas always plays because he loves it here. He's always had great finishes. And um, Jordan's playing. He's had one before, so he's playing. There's – I was surprised. Uh, right now they've got some big names. Uh, I know that right now we've got – uh, Shane Lowry's playing, so there's. Yeah, let me go gonna, through. That's what I was going to ask about. <laughs> yeah, let me go yeah, through yeah. alphabetically. We've got Sam Burns. We got Patrick Cantlay. Uh, let's see. We have Tony. Usually, Shoffley usually plays too. He usually plays here. Shoffley's playing here. We have Fina. We have Fleetwood. Uh, let's see again. I'm just going in alphabetical order. I'm looking at their list here. We got Sung J M. We have. Um, uh, let's see. It's, uh, hmm. M's. No McElroy. He won't be playing here. No. Uh, you said Shoffley. He's on there. 
Yeah, he's Spieth, really well. Jordan Spieth, he's playing. Yeah, Jordan's playing. He's uh, a past champion. So you mentioned play. Thomas. He's, Thomas is playing. Yeah. The gal is playing. And wow. uh, I think that, oh, and Cameron Young. So I believe those are all the big names that will be playing. Uh, and I think that'll be th good field. By the way, that'll be three straight weeks for Justin Thomas. So don't take him next week. So he's going to, he's going to win this week. So he'll probably withdraw. <laughs> he's been <laughs> favored. I'm surprised he's been so favored by so many for the last few weeks. I yeah. mean, he's playing he's, well, but I would have thought I'm yeah. surprised. Yes, I am surprised too, because he is the, he is right now the, uh, well, he's the fourth choice now, but yes, with all the other players, uh, that have won before he has. Uh, and, and, and actually, I mean, I'm talking about guys like, you know, Homa, Hovland. Uh, I think, the, I mean, even Zalatoris, I think those guys should be uh, better odds than Justin Thomas. But uh, I mean, to me, to me, among the top end guys, like who, who's hitting it better right now? Scheffler, obviously, I think Zalatoris is hitting it better right now. Beyond those two, though, you know, who, who among the elites is, is hitting it better? I'm not sure. Totally agree. I mean, I, I take it back what I said about about uh, well, uh, you know, when you said you were going to pick him, I was I was shocked. But I have after studying his golf swing, the improvements in his, his golfing truly are improvements. They haven't just altered a few things. I really think he's done a great job. And plus, of course, with his putting. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's amazing. been super super impressive, and I've, I'm happy to see it. I, I think he, I think he's a better driver now. It seems like he's taken a bit off of it. I don't think he's hitting it as far, but he seems a lot more accurate. That was that was always his issue. I remember at the um, U.S. Open when he was battling Fitzpatrick down the stretch, he was missing fairways on Sunday. Yeah. And it was kind of what cost him. I, I feel like he's gotten more accurate off the tee now. Clearly has. I mean, but, you know, if you look at his swing, I mean, he's taken a few miles an hour off, which he had to do um, mm -hmm. but with the swing changes. But it's actually the swing's better. So, you know, he's got plenty of length. He doesn't need to have to, you know, do what he did. And, of course, it was clearly, you know, huge, a huge strain on his back. And the talk of it was brutal. So I'm glad he's doing it. And he seems like a nice kid. All right. So uh, Scotty Scheffler uh, put everybody to sleep, which Jared was very happy about last Sunday because we finally have a one-and-done winner with Scotty Scheffler. <laughs> wow. Jared, Jared got him. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. I had done I had done horribly up until last week. I'm now inside the money. I'm you know in the top like you know ten percent or something just just from that's, that one win because it was awesome. you know four million four that's million it. bucks and there had hadn't been many people hitting winners anyways. So yeah, no, it's been it's been hard because there've been so many that you don't expect um, that have yeah. broken through. You know, I mean ones that literally are one and done. They probably may not win again for the rest of the year, but it's been really <laughs> hard to choose and. And I've seemed like I'm a week behind. Every time I take, I take someone. The next week they do great. <laughs> it's like I take. I know they're coming. They're coming good, and I get anxious yeah. and I take them when I should just wait just a little bit longer. Uh, by the way, one of our viewers uh, commented last week, Michael Seward. That should tell. We were talking, of course, about how long shots uh, were winning the majority of the really all of them they had won all of the events 40 to one was lowest number up until scotty scheffler's win last week and so regarding the long shots michael seward uh remarked that should tell you the state of the pga a long shot itself the mantra used to be it's tough to win on the pga tour nowadays if you were asked the following monday after a tournament you wouldn't know who won because it wasn't someone you're used to seeing or you probably didn't even watch um the, there, there is a big distinction, too, between long shots winning and also uh, what does it do to ratings on television when the long shots win every week and the difference between whether the long shots are players that are just journeymen uh, or are they Jake Knapps of the world, guys that, well, I've never heard of this guy before, but hey, maybe he's going to be somebody in the P, you know, on the PGA Tour, and this, is, this isn't just a fluke. Uh, so wh where do you guys stand on, on, on what we've seen over the course of the season so far leading, of course, before last week's win, where we have long shots dictating, uh, the tour so far this season. Jared, you want me to say something? Jared, you go. Yeah, I think, well, me and Greg have talked about this. I think part of it's just fluky that we've had these long shots, but I think that's part of it. I think another part is 
some of the quality that's left the PGA Tour for live. And I think, as I just said a couple minutes ago, I think a lot a lot of the best players in the world just haven't gotten off to a good start so far this season and sort of given um, you know, some, some of these long shots a chance. But I don't expect it to continue. I think, you know, we got a big name winner last week. I think we'll probably get another, you know, top 20 player winning this week. Um, you know, it, as we get to these tougher courses, uh, I think, you know, the cream sort of rises. I agree. We always used to say that the cream comes to the top in the majors. And and there's two there's been two things that you have to remember that have happened so far. We've had some really bad weather. Um, so again, you know how I am popping about tea times <laughs> and um and the luck of the draw. And we've had some pretty weak fields. You know, the, the all of the, the because of these special events now, they all take off the same weeks. And so when they you know, like Mexico has, has typically always been a very weak field. Um, and I think, you know, last year they were talking about how um, Rom was happy that he didn't win because he didn't have to go back. Um, <laughs> so it was because it's hard, you know, it's the, the, the you know, you got to be really careful when you're down in Mexico. You've got to stay on property and they have, you know, armed guards everywhere. And it's, you know, it's, you can't bring, a lot of them don't bring their families. And so it's not a typical, now you say that, uh, Fina loves it because he brings his whole family and they give him a house <laughs> and they all get to play on the other course and they get to, to have fun and they treat like a holiday. But most of the people are really careful, you know, and so it's not a fun one. Then you've got, look what happened at, when you were out in Western, in California, the weather was awful. And so what it was in Arizona yeah. as well. Yeah. And so that helps that, that, you know, you might've had a better tea time and, you know, and it's, and it's uncomfortable. So you're not really feeling like you want to go play. Um, and Matsuyama, it was time for Matsuyama to break through. He got, he fixed his neck problem and he hasn't been able to practice his putting for a year because every time he did his, his neck really played up. And so he, um, he got that fixed and, and, you know, putting's always been his weakness. And so, I think that's helped him tremendously. Look how great he's putting now. Yeah, I like him but, this week, but I, I am a little a little bit concerned with – I didn't know what the problem was when he was warming up on Sunday. Was it Sunday? And uh, Yeah, something with his like arm or elbow. It looked, more, it looked like his forearm they were working on. Yeah. So, yeah. And he didn't have a good day. And so, I, again, I like him. Because I don't know how you can't. We'll go over that, but that has to be. That's why I, I don't know if I could take him for one and done. Because I don't want to throw it all into him, and all of a sudden he just, uh, I can't continue after the first round or something like that. You just can't. You can't. I just don't think it's it's worth doing something like that when a player is coming off a potential potential injury situation. Who um, is the favorite this week? Who is? Oh, it's the same guy every week. Scotty. Yeah, I mean it's not even close every week now. I mean, mm -hmm. he's favored by like seven points almost every week. That's how much of a favorite he is. Um, and, and, and look, getting back to the long shots, I just want to close up by saying it is even with the players. I mean, look at John Romney. He goes to live. He hasn't won yet. I mean, that just shows you even there, there's some decent competition. But here, there's just – the competition is just tremendous. I mean, it's it just – you may not know who these players are. But there's just it's. I look at this field, and and I know a lot of these guys aren't going to compete for the for the win because they're just not good enough. But there's a lot of quality players in this field. I mean, talking, you know, eighty players that are capable of just having a good week and being in the top ten. It's just it's very deep now. It is. I agree totally. I mean, it's the the competition is there. They and they can really play, and you know, you you got a perfect conditions and. Different on the when you when you talk about the Corn Ferry Tour, it, they always it, it, the courses are long and wide open. So the people that come from that sometimes don't do well. But here you've got you know I looked at the rough for the Valspy played out there last week in Chi Chi's Pro Am, and the rough I, I found seven golf balls around the green. <laughs> I was just like as soon as I'd finish I'd walk over and just start looking in the in the round of greens and. Of course, the PGA will probably shorten it a little bit. I'm sure they'll cut it, but it is really long because we've had such a cold winter that the it's just like what happened last week at Bay Hill. I mean, you it's brutal. All right, now uh, this week let's talk about talk so because we were talking off the air about this. So talk about the greens and how unique they are, Jared. Yeah, so you know we talk about 
Bermuda greens a lot in Florida, but you know, these, and I think Jan was saying, even, even the greens, uh, at Bay Hill last week, they're you know, overseeded with POA. Um, and, you know, Jan, Jan should talk about this. She's more knowledgeable than I am, but, um, there, there's at least some similarity to what, you know, the guys played on at waste management. I think, you know, they, they also list those as Bermuda with POA as well. Yeah. I mean, the, the, when you're overseed with POA, the, the thing you've got to be careful is if it gets any hot weather at all, they get patchy because the POA dies. The POA doesn't like hot weather. Um, and again, if it rains, it gets really bumpy. So um, there's some greens up in the northeast where it's 100 percent POA and, and it's, it gets so bumpy. Um, so and Pebble Beach has always been that way. So it's really hard to, to you know, to judge their on the weather, you've got to be very careful. I mean, I, Tiff Eagle is better than what they used to have on it. They had that, they had, they had bent and bent just, just does not do well in Florida and they always lose the grass, which they have every summer after the tournament uh, at the, at, P, at the PGA. So I would think um, at the players. So I would think this year the greens will be better because we haven't, we've had ideal weather for it. I mean, it's going to be warm. It'll be in the eighties, but pretty dry yep. um it's supposed to rain friday afternoon and um but the greens uh will be able to hold up better yeah and let's keep that in mind too this is important that they switch the, the the schedule from may to march so this is only going to be now uh, i believe the fourth event in march so that's 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 important I mean, not just, you know, you got the weather changing, that's, that's the wind. So there's a lot of changes. And that's why uh, when you look at some of the trends, you do notice a few things that we'll get into. But uh, let's talk about putting first, Jan, because the greens again, uh, which players do you think, um, or, or I don't know if you have any individual players that you want to point out uh, that you think might do well? Uh, on on this surface, uh, whether it's because of the surface or maybe just the way that they're putting recently or vice versa, who, who would you point out? Well, I would look at short game, uh, putting and short game, but I think obviously you've got to take Scotty right now because he's on a roll. Everyone has been complaining about his putting and pushing it and, you know, pointing it out to him, which makes it worse. And then he changed putters. He changed, you know, I, I know he's been working on it all year and, and off season with his, with his actual stroke. And um, he's, he's, you know, have his hands, his arms are hanging further and he's changed putters over and over and over. And then last week he changed again to another putter. And I'm sure with this new putter, they're going to be running out at all of the clubs and buying them because, <laughs> and everywhere, because it is, um, it's a pretty amazing putter. I mean, you know, it's, it's the new, um, it's that new spider, um, the tailor-made spider. And, and everybody's been saying, asking me, what is it like? Should I buy one? I mean, it's $400. So it's not like it's cheap. And his is, is custom made, but it does have a whole bunch of different stuff. And he has a tendency, has always had a tendency to, which I like. I mean, there's there's two ways a putter can, can hang is toe hang, or it can be face balance. Now, face balance means it goes back straight up, a little bit shut, and then opens back up. And the face balance and the toe hang, which is a normal st stroke, should go slightly inside and through because um, obviously you, you're not vertical. And so uh, this putter is a little, is slightly toe hang. It's got a very soft insert, so it feels good. And it actually has got all kinds of fancy stuff. You know, if you miss hit it, you can't tell you've miss hit it. So you don't have this vibration. It's got a a thing to stop the vibration. It's got a new steel frame that's ultra light, so they can control the weights of it. So they, depending on the speed of the train, they can control the weight. But for Scotty, the fact that this putter squares itself up at impact, and so he always had that little, that little. Remember how he used to have a tiny little bit of a loop, like his golf swing, and then he'd pull across it, and he would move, miss it left. Well, now if he just lets it go and relaxes his hands, it squares itself back up. Now, the other thing I like about it, it has a 45 degree angle um, so that it creates overspin. So I don't know if you watched last week, but his putts were just getting to the hole. So that little bit of extra overspin, instead of being losing confidence, they would roll in on the longer putts. So now he's, he's gaining all kinds of confidence. So who knows how good he's going to have this year? Yeah, that's he, he that got. He got better each day to last week. He actually lost a bit putting on Thursday. He was like field average on 
Friday, he gained on Saturday, and he led the field in putting on Sunday. So, like, um, I think he's still figuring this this new putter out, still getting better, which is you know, scary for the rest of the tour. <laughs> oh, it yeah. is, because that's brand new putter this week. I mean, they've worked hard on that. They've changed putters, I think, every week. But this one, I think, is going to be in the bag. Now, he's, the problem we're going to have with Scotty is his baby is due the last week in April, and that's right around the time that of the – uh, the first, the second, the second major. So um, mm -hmm. hopefully he can, Meredith will be okay and they'll be able to go to the Masters and everything. But then with the PGA coming up, that might be, that that's around the time that she's due. So I don't know what'll, how that will affect him. Another reason to uh, seriously think of taking him this week <laughs> because yeah. you want to, first of all, take advantage of the hot, streak he's going on with that putter which you don't know if it's gonna it's golf you don't know if it's gonna hold so as as long as it's hot uh you want to take advantage of it and then throw in the fact that uh he's going to be distracted more uh in about a month yeah. and uh i, I was i know I was just the other thing is his Go odds ahead. what are the chances of back to back is so hot that's, you know, big tournament. that's the that's one. the part that worries me because you know, you look at a Wyndham who's putting really well too, and and of course Zala Torres the same way. I mean, he's his putting's changed since he went to the tall putter, and he's added an extra loft. He added 5.5 degrees of loft, which is very a lot of loft for a putter. So he doesn't if he miss hits it, it'll still have some overspin. So I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm stuck. I mean, uh, I've got Zala Torres right now that I really want to take Scotty, but I don't know. It's back to back. There's so much pressure, but he's used to the attention. I don't know. You you guys have to help me here. Yeah, I mean, back to back, back to back at the players, which has never been done before. So he he's, he needs to do two tough things. The other thing, I was I was just looking at this. Scheffler is still available to seventy percent of people in the the one and done that we're all in. How 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 many people do you think you're going to pick him this week? I think it might be like thirty plus percent of people are going to use Scheffler this week. So just like you're not, you know, it's you're not going to gain a ton by using him, even if he wins, just because so many other people are going to have him. Right. I mean, yeah. I'm looking at Zalatoris. I, you know, I, I like him. I might come go with another. You know, well, it's not. It can't be a no-namer because obviously, no. with a major, it's going to be someone big and someone playing well. I always believe in, you know, how you're playing at the time. You know, you know, Harris English messed up, and I took Roy last week, so I'm, I'm glad I'm finished with him. I'm mad at him <laughs> for messing up. <laughs> oh yeah. So I, I don't know. It's it's a tough one. It, because I like I think that's a good point, seventy percent, which I'm surprised that everybody's taking him. So I don't know. I mean, mm -hmm. look how great Min Lee played last week. So and he's starting to play well. So I don't know. Well, the only thing though is is that if you don't take him and he does win, and a lot of people take him, uh, yeah. you're falling behind. And then if you take him again and he doesn't win, then you regret not taking him, even though yeah. everybody took him. So right. Um, especially this year when you're in a situation where, as Jared said, just one win puts you right back in it. And mm -hmm. uh, you can you can, you can can just hang with everyone by taking Scheffler this week if he wins. And then, obviously, you got to then hit another winner on your own in the next couple of weeks. And if you could do that, which you have to do anyway to win this type of contest, then you're, you're probably in good shape. So, yeah, big decision to make. By the way, eight of the last ten winners of this event are major champions, including the last five. So that shows you uh, the type of and, – and the same was said about Arnold uh, about last week. Matter of fact, if you looked at the top of the leaderboard last week with the Shane Lowry's and the Scheffler's and the so forth and Matsuyama, you saw all major champs. Uh, Clark, yeah. Clark, yep. So that's going to be the same way this week. Uh, so keep that in mind. Tiger Woods, by the way, is the only player to win multiple TPT titles since 2003. So it's not just back-to-back's -back, never been done, but just to win for a second time at players has only been done once since 2003. And that was Tiger. So um, that, and, and not that uh, Jared minds because his top pick is somebody that's uh, won the year before. So um and then forget about long shots like you guys uh, mentioned because long shots just don't really have too much of a chance. Um, if you look at it, uh, the last 20 winners ranked inside the top 100, uh, which is no surprise. 
Um, by the way, only two players have ever won in their first appearance, dating back to the first event played here in 1982. That was Hal Sutton, and that was in 1983, and Craig Perks in 2002. Wow. Uh, wow. By the way, Perks was the last player to score his maiden PGA Tour victory here, and that was in 2002. And there are some yeah. names, some good names in this field that have never won a PGA Tour event. So, yeah. um, another interesting. Um, there but, have been there have been some there have been some lo like longer shots odds wise to win here though. You know, Sibu si Kim was, uh, I think, over 100 to one. I think Webb Simpson was like 100 to one when he won. And like you said, Greg, they were, you know, quality players inside the top 100, but there were, there have been guys to win at longer odds. So I don't think like to, to me, lo long shots are more in play for me this week than they were last week. I just think this course, because of all the water in play, like it's so volatile. If you hit two bad shots, you could be out of the tournament. So I do think, um, yeah, I, I, I only have one long shot on my card. I'm not going crazy with them this week, but I do think you can at least consider taking some of these guys, uh, you know, further down the odds board. Who's your long shot? My long shot is. Uh, sh should I give it away, or do you want to wait till we, we go through? We the can picks? wait. Okay. Well, oh, I want to know we'll now. We'll the audience. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know what's going to happen with. I don't know. I mean, I'm kind of stuck. I mean, obviously, I, I like Will and Scheffler, but I took Scheffler last year, so I'm I'm happy that I at least won one with him. But um, I don't know. It's a hard one. It's. It, I'm. I'm really. I'm. Well, I'm, we'll make I'm sure like, whatever we do, we'll make sure that we're not picking the same player then. So uh, <laughs> we know that's not going to work out well. But we know we know Jared's not picking Scheffler because he, he took him last week. So one of us will take Scheffler, that's for sure. Uh, I, I, I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna make that uh, statement right now. So uh, if you don't take him, Jen, I'm I'm gonna take him. Um, but and if you want to take him, then I'll I'll take someone else. I'm okay with that. Um, by the way, when when uh, Siwoo Kim won, uh, he it was he made uh, it was only his second appearance. So and that's pretty rare uh, because only two players. If you look at it, the last 15 first-time winners, uh, during that time, only two players made less than four appearances before winning. Scheffler in his third appearance and Siwoo Kim in his second appearance. And what's interesting about that is that Kim had a top 25 in his first appearance. Now, what's important there is, is that the last 16 winners had at least one previous top 25. And that included Siwoo Kim, who only played it once and had a top 25. So that's telling you, you better have some experience of playing exactly. halfway decently on this golf course before you're going to expect I mean, to win. Yeah, that's a good point because it, there's only really two major, major championships where that's the case, obviously, this one and the Masters. When it comes to the PGA and the U.S. Open, you know, the course might fit your game, but – everyone is kind of equal they've all seen the course maybe once or twice during the year they've gone and played it but everybody that does well has to know you know tpc i mean I, you look at their i looked at um the stats of people that are playing well this year that have never played there before or last they played once and they all missed the cut so it's definitely something to look for is the experience on that golf course it's, it's there's a lot of kind of places you need to go where you I mean, now they won't have as you know the, have those grain, but you know you got to know how to where to get up and down from, which bunkers are easier to to be. I mean, you know, there's certain t type pin places, but it's like the Masters. Every year they're the same, and the same mm -hmm. thing with this. You know, you know when you go over to 13 where the t's the pin's going to be. So and what you have to do. So it, even though you know it on you see it on TV, it's still playing it is totally different. So you've got to yeah. figure someone. I mean, someone like Cam young right now that's that's he's such a quality player he's been playing his whole life he almost doesn't it doesn't count because he's played so much that he may not be quite as nervous but coming down the stretch if you've never won here that's a you know <laughs> think of 17 and 18 and that those are two hard holes to finish on uh by the way uh i mentioned that there have uh, actually only been four winners since the change so this would be a fifth so uh, the change from May to March, and that started in 2019. Those four winners all ranked in the top 10. They were a second, a third, a sixth, and a 10th ranked uh, player at the time of their win. Uh, and the other thing that was important is all of them had, a, had at least one top five in the same calendar year prior to playing a TPC, so all of them, 
and they all played at Genesis. That could just be a coincidence, but we, <laughs> we know that's a pretty tough golf course. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but those are the little interesting things there. Now, let's go to the stats. Yeah. Go ahead, Jared. Yeah. Now, I, was, I wanted to ask Jan about the switch from May to March, and you know, Jan, do you think do you think that favors the you know the elite players? Do you think it favors longer hitters? What you know, what is the change in, you know from May to March? What, what do you think that's done to how we should handicap this this event? Well, it's going to change a lot with the with the putting because the greens are changed. You know, because they could not keep Poa through May. Uh, that was the main problem. Is that you know when it's transitioning, you lose you're going to lose all the Poa. And that was always a concern, even with, with Valspar. They're always worried that if they'll get too much warm weather. Um, but then the problem with that is also, you think of how bad the weather's been at, up at TPC. Um, we've had some, I think three of the last five, it's been horribly cold and unseasonably cold weather. I mean, the year that, that I was there when Cam Smith won, and it was brutally cold and miserable. And I remember Cam coming in and and he cut in early before the really bad wet party mm -hmm. uh, rain and he goes that was a struggle i like a struggle and um so that's the thing you always have to worry about with march is the weather at jacksonville because it's not as warm but this year it's going to be good so yeah. come again it's going to be someone's a really good chipper i think you know i'm amin Wuli or jason day who are brilliant brilliant mm -hmm. chippers and so is i mean let's, let's face it scotty's a fantastic chipper and that's what saved him is putting may not his stats might be a little bit deceiving because when he does miss a green he's his chipping is brilliant and so uh now that he's putting good it's scary <laughs> but it's it, and he's 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 got such a great attitude it doesn't really matter if he has gets bad weather so <laughs> that part of it's hard i'm talking myself into him it sounds like <laughs> uh, but justin thomas is a good justin thomas is a good chipper too Oh, he's a brilliant, brilliant chipper. And, you know, he's struggled with his putting a lot and he's been working yeah. really hard on it. So um, his putting is getting better. I mean, it's never been bad, you know, but I mean, if you think of the great chippers, Jordan, Justin, Scotty, Minwoo Lee, all the Australians are always brilliant chippers, but um, and Jason Day is a great chipper. I actually think the, the, the weakest part of, uh, Zalatoris's game and of of Matsuyama's is these chip they're, they're chipping. Hmm. All right. Well, let's take a look at the stats before we go through the field because we only have 20 minutes left now. So <laughs> let's take a look at them. And here you got the top 10 event history, of course, and uh, the top 10 in uh, total strokes gained for 2024. And then uh, I'm going to switch this over here and pop up the top 10 on Florida courses the last 36 rounds so uh, why did you pick these uh, stats jared yeah top 10 in course history last five years is nice because as you said greg that covers the time since it moved to marsh now it's only it's only four events in those five years because you had the, the uh, tournament that was canceled uh due to COVID after the first round but you, know, you, you get the top 10 there since it moved to marsh so that's nice hideki matsuyama victor hovland tommy fleetwood your top three there Top 10 in total strokes gain. You know, this is just simply who's played best so far this year. And if you look at the winners of the players, especially over these last four tournaments, they are guys that have come into this tournament in, in good form. It's rare that someone's going to win the players, you know, struggling coming in. So these are the top 10 in total strokes gained in 2024. Scotty Scheffler, obviously leading the list. Pavan, number two, you know, he, he's an interesting long shot. I don't know whether I believe he can win this thing, but he is playing well. Um, a bunch of other big names in the, on this top 10 list. And you have guys like Keith Mitchell, Doug Gim, Eric Van Royen, Benny Ann. Um, my long shot is in that list, Jan. I won't give it away yet, but it's, it's one of these guys in that top 10 list. Um, and then, so the Florida courses, this is a new feature on Fantasy National. They actually just released it this week. You can now sort by state so you can look at all all courses in florida and how guys have done on those courses and i think that's especially worthwhile now in florida in particular because these courses are you know there's differences but there's a lot of similarities too right same same grass type you have wind in play uh quite a bit for these tournaments lots of water in play for these tournaments so um there's there's your top 10 on florida courses last 36 rounds that that's you know looking back the last three or four years um scotty scheffler leading that list as well so Pretty easy to talk yourself into him this week. But um, Shane Lowry, second on that list. We've seen him play well the past two weeks in Florida, so that's kind of continued. Victor Hovland, Justin Thomas, Max Homa rounds out your your top five on Florida courses. 
All right. Well, I'm going to flesh. I'm surprised the- Max Homer's done well over here because Me too. You know, like, because yeah. um, the thing is that anyone that comes from the West really struggles with the grass. I remember, you know, mm-hmm. Phil never wanted to play it down here because he hated chipping on uh, the Florida Bermuda is really hard to chip from. So I've always leaned towards the favored, you know, if you've, you've been in Florida since since Shane Lowry, the last two years has moved here with his family. Uh, I think he's going to have a m- lot better feel for the grass than he had before. I'm surprised Fleetwood hasn't played well yet. Um, and oh, then someone off like a Matthew year. Pavone, you think of him, he's he's from France. and, and uh, But, you know, you get used to a lot of different grasses, but they still don't have Florida Bermuda. What uh, what did you have home is putting stats uh, here, Jared? <clears throat> yes. Um, yeah. He, you know, he's played well here. So Homa here has gone miscut 13th, 6th. Yeah, he's gotten better year. each that's, time. That's, impre- that's, that's, been, that's what you're looking yeah. for. And that's been despite not putting well, although he has putted better each time as well. He lost 2.8 strokes putting his first time here. He lost 1.3 strokes putting in 2022, gained Point four strokes putting in 2023 so still okay. didn't putt excellent but has you know was field average has gotten better so like his ball striking numbers have been awesome at this event so if he, and that's if, he important. Can, if he can putt well he's i think he's definitely live stay away from that water all right i'm gonna go ahead and, and pop up the picks there they are so there are my picks I, I i went off and hit three long shots so that's why i have eight picks this week jared is uh in half with the four and is one long shot so uh, yeah, Jan's trying to figure out where well, I don't see nothing. It's not on my screen. I know. I'm like, come on. I want to know now. No, 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 no. You got to wait. There's long shot. It's not on the screen yet. <laughs> got to wait like everybody else. So, uh, and, so look, we have 17 minutes to go. So let's get through this. Everybody knows how we feel about Scheffler. So we don't have to go there. Um, McElroy, uh, just quickly on McElroy, his stats are terrible so far this year. I mean, he is just all over the place and, and that bothers me, but, uh, keep in mind, uh, he, the, the the worst the, the last time he had such a bad start to his PGA Tour season was 2018, and he had a very similar type of first four where he just didn't play well at all. His best in in 2018 in the first four was 20th. He had two missed cuts and a 59th. Then he had then excuse me he went to um, uh, uh, excuse me then he went to uh, Bay Hill, and I think he did pretty well at Bay Hill. I think that was his win at Bay Hill actually. Um, and so my point is, is that even though he had those first four that weren't very good, he turned it on at Bay Hill and won his first ever and only event at Bay Hill. So he's capable because he's such a great player of, of doing that. The problem yeah. is he's 12 to one. You're getting much better odds. You're getting double odds with other players who are playing better than him. And that's why I still think it's kind of tough to take Rory this week. He, he, he's flat he's flashed like old like classic Rory form on occasion right like pebble beach he raced out to a lead on thursday last week on saturday he did he shoot like 30 on the back nine or something he's just yeah. he's had too many bad holes too many bogeys he just he hasn't been consistent enough and you know i, I don't i don't think you can bet him at 12 to 1 with with how he's playing right now not with water you know the thing is when he hits those big old crooked shots you know like i mean he carried the, he carried on 10 he went all the way over the out of bounds and uh, last week and then and drove it on the green and that's great but to not be able to control your ball I mean you've got to be able to come in down that stretch you've got to be able to control the ball and, and right now it's go, he's going sideways I mean he's he's um he swing it really doesn't change that much but he must be there must be something but he hits a big right to left which you know the golf course suits right to left but he's had he's got too much hook in his in his shots right now so I think he needs a little bit of technique work um, and like you said, he's funny how you can't tell. He, he gets streaky. Um, maybe he'll do – I know he's he's really aiming at the Masters. So after this, I bet he takes off some time to figure out what's wrong. Last year he changed his driver. Remember he went to a shorter driver and he controlled it again because he was losing control. But um, his swing needs a little bit of work. Uh, keep in mind, in his last six trips to TPC, three of them are missed cuts. Wow. And, and one was a win. And, and that's typical of players, okay? Yeah. Because uh, yeah. one of the other trends, in this field, there's not one player who has more than c- four career top tens at TPC Sawgrass. Not wow. one has more than four. That just shows you how tough and inconsistent every player is on this golf course. Um, all right, so next group, we have Shoffle, Thomas, Hovland, Homa. And Thomas is Jared's top pick. Uh, and Homa is my top pick. 
So, uh, nice. uh, Homa to me is, like I said, I love the fact that he's gotten better each time here. Two over, six under, eight under, sixth, like you said, last year, 13th the year before that. He's also trending the same way this year. Miscut 16th, eighth in his last three. The combination, I love that. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, meanwhile, Thomas, again, the only thing with Thomas is he's won this before. So he'd have to win it two times in the next three years. Uh, that's a little bit difficult to do. Um, he's also not played particularly well the last two years here, but throw out the miscut at Genesis when he was partnered with Tiger for the first couple of day, well, the first day. Uh, the fact is, is that uh, he's been really good. Yeah, j just going back to your Homa pick, which I, I love. You know, I always uh, love Homa bats. Um, you know, he he had he had some nice finishes in California as he usually does. He really wasn't hitting it great, and the numbers kind of back that up. He said after his Sunday round at Bay Hill that like he kind of felt like he turned a corner and he liked how he was hitting it at Bay Hill, and his 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 stats were a bit better there. So you know, everything sort of trending in the right direction for home, including you know how he's performed at this course. So I love that pick. Yeah, Thomas is my top pick. You look at those three top ten lists we looked at course history total strokes gained this year and uh, Florida courses, two guys appear on the top 10 on all three of those lists. One is Scotty Scheffler. The other is Justin Thomas. I think, you know, it's just a good course fit for him. I like him on these, you know, accuracy courses. I think you have to hit a lot of different types of shots here. Is that, it, wouldn't you agree with that, Jan? You got to kind of be able, be able to work it both ways. Justin Thomas mm -hmm. can do that. As we said, he's a really good short game player. I just think he, and, and, and you know, Greg and I have been saying, really for the past couple months now that we think Thomas is trending towards a win um, just the way he's, he's been playing so far this year. Well, plus he lives at a golf course where it has the same grass on the, on the greens. So that part helps too, because he's the course that the bears club, they do the same thing. They have um, TF Eagle with Obesita with Poa, so they can at least practice there. Um, so that helps. Uh, Shop. So, Go ahead. No, no. So that, that part helps. I don't know that he's, yeah, I know he's so desperate to win. I don't know that everybody's so, the ones that haven't won are so desperate to win that I don't yeah. know. It's hard. Well, that includes yeah. Shoffley. He hasn't won since 2022. Yeah. He is he, runner up at 14 under par in his first appearance here, which is almost impossible to do. And then his last three appearances after that, miscut, miscut, miscut. <laughs> and then he was 19th last year. So, um, but he's just, I don't know. I do think that there's something to that, especially with Shoffley and Cantlay. We saw that at Genesis. I just, they're, they're starting to maybe feel it uh, when, when they're getting close to, to, to another win because it's been so long. Um, and then Hovland, I also think Hovland statistics so far haven't been all that great, but he, he did get a little bit better for a time last week, but it was just too inconsistent last week as well. But his uh, experiences here have also been very good. Miscut, ninth and third so he's really been playing well here the last two years but again i just don't know the way he's playing it doesn't fit with the type of player that needs to win at players right. well again you know i mean his short game you know he's if he's weak, any weakness even though his, his bunker plays improved he's still his chipping's not great i mean it's not it's the weakest part of this game everything is great but i mean i guess the weakest yeah. part of this game is still his short game and it, it improved. It was better last year, and then he he switched coaches again, right, Jan? He mm -hmm. switched short game coaches. Here. He got rid of who he was using last year, and now it's kind of taking a step back again. So that's okay. that's been disappointing to see. That's weird. Yeah. All right. Uh, next grouping, you got Cantlay, Morikawa, Spieth. Uh, let's just quickly with those three again, as I mentioned with Cantley, hasn't won since 2022. No top 15s. Three miscuts out of the last four years. So I just can't go there. Um, and then you got Spieth. He's also just been a little bit too inconsistent lately. I don't know what's going on there. And he's only made four of nine career cuts at uh, players. So I just don't think he can go with Spieth. And Morikawa was 13th last year. That was a pretty good, that was his best showing. But uh, yeah, there's also, I mean, Morikawa's game just has not been the same for the past year and now uh, a few months. No, I mean, I thought once he, once he got married, he settled down. Um, but that... Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm, and plus, he's another one that you know, short game wise, that if yeah. anything, there's a little kink in that. And you know, you've got to be able to hit all those shots at that golf course. As you get some pretty, and plus, you remember again, he's he's a West Coast man, and uh, that yeah. that grass is hard. I mean, if I remember talking to Phil about playing chipping in a Bermuda, and he's like, you know, I think I'm a brilliant chipper. I said, you are, but he goes. 
this grass, when it when it starts to get a little bit ratty, when you know, as it starts to transition, there's you hit the shot and it just disappears into sand. And it's so hard. You have really have to become in so so shallow and if it's long grass as well, and then and it's such a hard shot to, to play. Um, you have to just I'm used to it because obviously I'm in Florida and it is tough. All right. Next group we have uh, is Matsuyama, Zala Torres, uh, Ludwig uh, at 35 to 1. Uh, that's his new uh, name on this show because uh, he, he, he's confusing us with his last name. <laughs> uh, but Matsuyama, again, if it's not for that Sunday potential injury deal, mm-hmm. he's definitely he's in my picks. So he's definitely uh, an, a big time option because he has six top 25s out of eight appearances. That's as good as you're going to see from anybody here at Players. Um, he only won top five, though, but that was last year when he was fifth. And he's coming in, obviously, playing uh, really well after the win and looked really good last week until we don't know if he's a little bit banged up. Um, and then Zalatoris, of course. I mean, come on, you're still getting 35 to 1 with Zalatoris, which is awesome, which is, again, why he's in my is picks. He? Yeah, he's 35 to is he 1. Still, is he still 35? Now, I don't think he's going to be 35 to 1 in most sports books, but he's 35 okay. to 1 here at DraftKings. And, um, Gosh, he is. Uh, and obviously he's playing great. I mean, he had a four, what, a four shot lead yesterday, last week. It looked like he was going to five, five shot, five, five shot. shot lead. It looked like he was going to be <laughs> yeah. the one that was going to run away with it. But unfortunately, yep. um, did not play well late on Saturday and then had nothing on Sunday. Yeah. There's again, it, it's a very similar golf course. There's some holes where if you miss it or shot at the wrong time, you're going to be, it's a, it's a double, you know, cause you're in the water. It's not just out of the long grass. You, you miss hit a shot and you're done. Um, so I, I like Zalatoris right now. I mean, he's he's definitely on my list, but I don't know. It's it, I'm I'm actually getting more confused. <laughs> I mean, I really I like Matsuyama again, but it's um, I just think chipping his putting is so much better I, now that he can practice his putting. But and he lives in you know he lives here. He's got a place in Orlando for the winter, so he's been used to this grass. He was he was also the first round leader the COVID year that got canceled. Mm. I remember because yeah. I I, I, I had him that year and I was very excited. <laughs> in the tournament. Yeah. yeah, I mean keep in mind though, as, as with the water and it's a difficult course, some difficult holes. It is an easier golf course than Bay Hill, so it's not even close. So the last several years, even we've had what seventeen under, fifteen under, fourteen under. So that's much different than what your hand. So so even though it's tough. It's not as tough, and that will um, you know make it a little bit forgiving. Um, but uh, still, you better be on top of your game with all the uh, potential hazards out there. Okay. Uh, well, the reason is because you know at Bay Hill they lengthen the course for the PGA, and when they do that, it changes the angles. You you think of number two, you think of number three, that dog leg around the water, and of course number six. And they keep moving the tee back and it narrows the driving area. And look how many hit in the water on six. And, they, and they're trying to cut across to, so that they don't get in that long grass and have to chip out. And, and then they have a second shot that's, that's like 10 feet across. And so it's, it, they, whereas at TPC, it was designed as a long golf course when they renovated it. So it's designed, the, the angles are easier than at Bay Hill. Bay Hill, it's, it's actually unfair for those guys. Yeah, Fleetwood and Nap, that was really hard to see uh, what they went through uh, on that hole. Um, okay, so let's uh, uh, skip to our picks. And um, uh, let's, uh, first of all, uh, talk about, because we've already gone through, actually, just Thomas, Homa. Again, I have Homa, Zalatoris, and Matsuyama as my top three. Uh, Jared as, uh, Thomas as his top pick. So let's go to the uh, three more picks now before we get to uh, before we get to some long shots. Uh, Jared is going with Sam Burns as his second pick at forty to one. That was my my, my uh, uh, one and done last week, and he was doing awesome until Sunday's disaster. Yeah. And then uh, I am going to go with my fourth and fifth picks: Shane Lowry and Wyndham Clark. Uh, because I just can't believe Wyndham Clark is still forty-five to one. So, wow! Uh, that's the only reason I took him. I just, you got to be kidding me. Uh, he's still forty-five to one. So anyway, let's talk about those three: Burns, uh, Clark, and Lowry. First, uh, Burns, Jared. Yeah, Burns' Sunday is definitely concerning, um, but it's a, it's a really tough golf course. You can make big numbers at Bay Hill. 
pretty easily. He had played awesome through the first three rounds. He's played awesome this season so far. Again, go back to our top 10 in total strokes gained this year. Sam Burns is fourth on that list. Sam Burns is a, what, he's a LSU guy, I, I think. You know, he's, he's definitely a uh, Southeast we guy. We talked about likes, it last week. Likes, yeah. likes this grass type. I like Bert betting Sam Burns in Florida. Obviously, he's won at, at the Valspar, Valspar multiple times. So I think 40 to 1 is a good number for a guy. Burns is one of those guys where if he gets in the mix on Sunday, I, I think I, I know I know, uh, have have faith faith in him to, to close a deal. I think he could win an event like this. The, the only thing know, though, that we've talked What happened to Tom Springs? Yeah. I, I mean, he's not going to win every time he's in the mix, but he's he, he's won he's won big big events, right? I mean, he's, he threw yeah. that away and gave it to Nick. I mean, it, he couldn't even hit the green with an eight iron. That's disgraceful. Yeah, the only thing is, is uh, the one thing he hasn't done yet is win the really big ones. He yep. hasn't and not look good in them. He hasn't looked good in majors quite often, and so far he hasn't looked all that great at players as well. He's done okay, but that's the last thing that Sam Burns needs to do. But he's gotten off to such a good start that maybe this is the year. Sort of similar to what we saw with Homa last year. And that I think we're anticipating from Homa this year as well, mm -hmm. is that he's going to start breaking through with these big events. Um, okay, so, and then I have Lowry and um, uh, Clark. Uh, so again, Lowry at 40 to 1. Clark, by the way, is 50 to 1 now at DraftKings. Wow. So wow. Lowry's just playing too good right now for me not to take him. Uh, he only has one top 10 here, but that's okay. Third and fourth in his last two events. Um, and, and, and that's uh, uh, his best run um, since 2019 when he had three top 10s. So it, goes, so it's, it has been a long time since Shane Lowry. He's put three top 10s in a, in, in a row on tour. So you are betting against that or, and, 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 or I'm betting with that. Uh, Clark, meanwhile, best finish was 27th last year. So that's not too great, but it was okay enough for me. Coming off uh, a really good showing last week. By the way, quickly, Jan, what did you think? Because some people think that Wyndham Clark should have been penalized more for his conduct uh, uh, last week. Oh, well, I, I just think Wyndham Clark, I like to see a little bit of color. I mean, you know, I mean, come on. We've, I know it's a gentleman's sport, but let's, it, you know, the, it, last week it was unfair. I mean, I already said that. And I like, I love his golf swing. I think, you know, he's always been kind of aggressive and, and, um, you know, like they say that when they when they play against him in Texas, that he's like, oh, let's let's double that bet. You know, I mean, he's very mm -hmm. confident. So I, I like that, actually. Anything on those two, Lowry, Clark? Well, I love I think Lowry right now um, is swinging great. You know, he's comfortable here in Florida now. He's had two years living here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I really am one of those people that totally believe in, you know, when you're on a good streak and. He drove it brilliantly on Sunday. I mean, he was playing with Scotty, and he, under the pressure, he just – he really drove it really well. So that's something impressive, especially for TPC. I'm, I'm looking at Lowry. All right. We've got two minutes left, so let's go through the long shots. Jared, you've got Fina. Finally, Jared. <laughs> <laughs> let's go with Jared's two long shots. Uh, one of them is 60-1, to 1, and that's Finau. The yeah, other, he's not a long shot. It's just, yeah, he's it's just a bad number. Yeah, and <laughs> er, er, but uh, my most recent pickup uh, in fantasy last week is your top long shot, Eric Van Royen, at one hundred and ten to one. Um, and then my three long shots are going to be Keith Mitchell at ninety to one, Nick Taylor at one hundred to one, and uh, I'm going back to Novak at one hundred and fifty to one because he still keeps playing well. I mean. He shouldn't be 150 to one Novak the way he's playing right now. I know he's yep. he's a no name, but uh, his his game is really on right now. So those are the five long shots we have. Jared, talk about uh, Finau and Van Royen. Yeah, Finau's not someone I came into the week planning to bat. I just think 60 to one is too big of a number for him. His ball striking has been unbelievable this season. You know, gained 8.3 strokes at Farmers, 4.9 strokes at Pebble, uh, 5.9 strokes at Genesis. Uh, 6.3 strokes in Mexico. The putting obviously has been a problem. He did turn that around in Mexico. He gained 0.3 strokes, actually. You know, that's always the key with Fina. But um, just, you know, you, you got to be in control of your ball at this golf course. And Fina obviously is right now. So I think if he can putt okay, he can be in the mix. And then Van Royen, I mean, someone who's just is playing well, playing well in Florida, was just right in the mix at Honda, which I think is probably the most similar course to this one. Maybe I don't know if you agree with that, Jan, but it's a, it's a shorter Florida golf course. So I like that he played well at Honda and Van Royen. I got to, I got to pull this up. He has played here once. It was, was it last year or was 13th, it 2022? Two years ago. 
13th in 2022, gained 11.3 strokes on approach. I'm going to look it up right now. I'm assuming that led the field. He actually lost strokes putting that year. But okay, sorry. Russell Henley led the field that year with 11.5 gain uh, strokes gained on approach. Ben Royan was next at 11.3. So he, he definitely has some good vibes at this golf course from that uh, from that first appearance in 2022. Uh, six top 25s in his last eight this year with two top 10s in that runner-up you're talking about. He was 25th last week. Um, and by the way, um, I went with Mitchell because uh, he's also uh, playing pretty well like he normally has done lately uh, at this time of year. Um, he's made four out of five cuts at players. He's coming in with three straight top 20s, one top 10, and then the other guys, I mean, I don't think Taylor should be 100 to 1, which is why I took him. I mean, he's starting to now show that consistency that we've been waiting for. Yeah. Solid 12th last week. Just one top 20 here, and he's missed a couple of cuts, but he's also made three of them. And then, uh, yeah, Novak, uh, again, like I said, I just think that because um, he was 180 to 1 to start the week. Uh, yeah. His, his, his stroked, uh, stroked gain stats are excellent. Uh, so far this year the thing i'm scared about he was 10 over par missing the cut here last year uh i don't expect him to win but i do think he's a good maybe if you'd look for a top 10 kind of guy yep. um because he's got three straight I, top 10s coming in i i made two other long shot bets on monday morning that i didn't include on these picks because their odds have have uh been cut in half actually nick taylor i got it 200 to one whoa on fan duel 200 to one. And then, yep. And then, and the other one is uh, Doug Gim. I bet at 200 to one. I think he's now been cut to 100 to one, playing playing the, his the best golf of his career so far this year, and has had a lot of success at this course. Um, so you know, I don't know if I trust the guy to actually win it on Sunday, but I do think 200 to one was you know too big of a number for for both Gim and Nick Taylor. Wow. All right. Yeah, I don't think he can win it. You just get so nervous. <laughs> I don't think he can control it, but he is playing better. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I like to – well, I, my favorite swing is Tony Finau, so I love that golf swing technically. It's really good, and he's strong. Eric Van Ruen, I, I was going to take him – and I should have uh, – down in uh, in Honda. But mm -hmm. my only concern is that he's a little bit short. He's, he's a slightly – you know, he's shorter than average. Well, I mean, they're all long, but he's a little bit shorter than the top guys, and so that means that if, the, if you get any kind of – bad weather he's he's going to be struggling with um you know the longer irons all right so that's going to wrap it up uh, so uh, uh you're going with justin thomas with your one and done jared or you're not sure yeah because these are very top likely pick. i mean yeah i'm very likely going thomas if i did go elsewhere if you want to give me if you want me to give you two other names sure. i'd say homa and Zalatoris would be my second and third choices there you go. I want to, well, the thing is, if you go with a Scheffler or Zella Taurus, a lot of people have taken them, haven't they? Yeah, so again, Scheffler's been used by 30% of That's not a lot. people, so he's still available for 70. Um, yeah. Zella Taurus, I didn't, I didn't look at, but I'm sure he's still available for most. Scheffler, yeah. Scheffler's going to be, like, super popular. He is. Week, and, I but, would think so. I mean, but look, there could be some people that are, are going to be against the back-to-back, -back, and that's possible. It is. I mean, uh, but I could see another 30% going with Sheffield this week. So Yeah, me too. Yeah. Um, and Jan, uh, who's your, do you have a top three before we uh, close out? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do the favorites, obviously. <laughs> the, the first two, I'm, I'm, I'm doing um, Scheffler and, and – uh, and Zalatoris, but I, you know they're both so favored. I would like to go with someone with a little bit more longer shot. Well, you got Lowry. You like Lowry, don't you? I like Lowry a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't. Should... I don't think. I don't think Zalatoris will be that popular. I agree. I think. I think Justin Thomas might be the second most popular one and done mm -hmm. after Shuffler. It's possible. But I'm still taking him. Yeah. I mean, Matsuyama him. could be taken this week. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if. And look, you got McElroy still. Some people probably mm -hmm. still take a McElroy. Um, yep. and then you've got other players. Yeah. You get a whole lot of players to choose from. So yeah, I agree. I don't think, I think <laughs> Scheffler is the only one that's going to be taken. I, I, you know, as, as you said, a lot. Yeah. So, agreed. um, so, so we'll go with Scheffler, Lowry and, uh, uh, Zalatoris for Jan. We all have Zalatoris, uh, which, which is a bad sign for Zalatoris. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, uh, so we'll see. And, uh, I don't know. It sounds like Jan might be leaning towards Lowry. Yeah, I'm leaning towards Lowry. Right. I, I like the way he drove it. 
All right. So Jan will probably like go with Lowry. Jared will take JT. I'll go with Scheffler. And um, uh, we'll be back. Jan will be back next week. Uh, yeah, next week. Valspar. Next week. Yep. So yep. she's not going to be. I don't. Well, we'll see if we can get you on the show because a lot's going to depend on. On because you might even be there on Tuesday. So oh, I'll I'll be there Tuesday and Wednesday uh, filming swings and then yeah. Uh, yeah and Monday I play in the Celebrity Pro Am. So uh, you'll be busy next three week. Three days I'm done. Yeah. So either way, if we don't get you on the show next week, we're definitely going to get all of the video that you're going to bring from Valspar that we'll post on the channel. And then, of course, we'll definitely see you for the Masters uh, coverage because you are going out to Augusta. And we'll uh, uh, obviously be letting uh, people know how we're going to uh, you know, swing that because um, uh, they're not going to let you do a whole lot uh, that Valspar will. So, all right, guys, appreciate it. Uh, I know you all uh, both have to run. So uh, we'll see you soon. Okay. Thanks very much. It's good to see you guys.